Tell somebody it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. I'm, I'm amazed that God is still encountering people on this road. Preacher, God decides to do it on his own. He doesn't need your platform. I hear it, Lord. To meet you right where you are. He's still saving lives and he's still speaking to people yes, yes, on their yes, way. Yes, yes. It's going to get better. And that's a word for us on today. It's going to get better. Yes. Encourage somebody to say, it's getting better. It's getting better. Yes. Just by hearing his witness, it's getting better. It's getting better. Yes. We, we thank God um, for, for this opportunity to come and witness what thus said the Lord. I believe everything that God has done from the beginning of service to this very moment is to lead us into this moment where the word can flow freely to the hearts and, and into the minds of his people. Sometimes you wonder why, why do we do what we do? That's because sometimes our, our hearts and our lives are so con consumed with so many things that we need to break down some of those things in order for the word of God to penetrate our hearts. I'm excited to present to you. Um, I just met, met Elder Harper but he has encouraged us and helped us tremendously in a matter of just a couple encounters. And um, I believe that he has the word of God on the inside of him. God has brought him all the way from Hayward to Sacramento to share the word of the Lord. Yeah, the scripture says, he that has an ear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. And if we all would just stand to our feet in reverence to God's word that's coming through the man of God. Amen. Let's say amen for Elder Harper as he comes at this time. All right. Let's give the Lord hand praise. Yes. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in presence of the Lord. I'm so happy to be here. Thank God for Pastor Younger and our First Lady Melissa. Had an opportunity to sit with them uh, about a week, a week and a half ago and just our spirits just connected. I can see the power of God operating in their lives. They have such wonderful spirit. I have enjoyed this service. The service has been anointed. The praise and worship has been anointed from the time I stepped foot in this church. It has been a blessing. The musician over there, he is just leading us into the throne room. Let's give him a hand. We don't always appreciate our musicians enough, but I'm listening to them, and they are, I can tell they are dedicated. I hear the bass lines. I hear the, the lead. <laughs> I hear the melodies. So I want to give them their props, and I'm just so happy to be here. You know, my wife is here with me, my bride of 32 years. She doesn't even look 32 years right. old. Stand up, please. This is my wife, Lisa, and we got married June 10th of 1989, and I've been faithful to her since I laid eyes on her. Right. And I'm so happy that she is here with me today. Right. And I give honor to everyone that is in the audience today. And I'm just going to give you a few words. This young man has already given us the message, and I'm just going to tap into what he has said. He said it's going to get better. Right. Yeah. You know, and I, I just praise God for the anointing that was flowing on him today, and we're just going to continue in that vein. I see so many young people uh, here today. Young people, uh, are you back in school? If you're back in school, raise your hand. You're back in school? Man, man, you know, I was a... Uh, I used to be a lieutenant for a police department. I was mayor for a city, and I used to do leadership lunches in the schools, and, and I would go and talk to the youth, and you had to be careful talking about religion, you know. So 
uh, I want to tell you that I can do all things through yeah. Christ yeah. who gives yeah. me strength. Yeah. So when you're yeah. going to school, remember that I can do all yeah. things through yeah. Christ. Yeah. I can do everything God has asked me to do because he's given me the power to do it. Yeah. I would tell the kids, look at, uh, I would tell them, um, consider yourself, my friend. You've got all that the greatest of men have had. Yeah. Two arms, two legs, two hands, two eyes, uh -huh. and a brain to use if you would be wise. Yeah, right. With this equipment, they all began. So start from the top and say, I can. Yeah. Yeah, Look right. at them, the wise and great. They take their food from a common plate and similar knives and forks they use. With similar laces, they tie their shoes. The world considers them brave and smart, but you've got all they had when they made their start. You can triumph and come to skill. You can be great if you only will. You are well equipped for the fight you choose. You've got arms and legs and a brain to use. And the man who has risen with great deeds to do began his life with no more than you. You are the handicap that you must face. You are the one who must yeah. choose your place. You must go where you decide to go, how much you will study the truth to know. God has equipped you for life, yeah. but he lets you decide what you want to be. Yeah. And courage must come from the soul within, and the man must furnish the will to win. So figure it out for yourself, my lad. You've got all that the greatest of men have had. And with your equipment, they all began. So start for the top and say, Amen. I can, I can. So young people, I can. Remember that, I can. I can do everything that God has purposed me to do because he's given me the power to do it. Is that all right? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes, Amen. God bless you. And so we're going to get into the word today. I have a wonderful scripture uh, for you today. And as we're preparing to receive the word of the Lord, if you would turn your devices, your Bibles, your smartphones to 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy, that's in the New Testament, the second chapter, the 20th through the 20th, 21st verse. And I'm going to read just those two verses for the sake of brevity and for the sake of preaching. I like reading out of the King James Version, although I study out of all the versions. Uh, but when it comes to uh, ministering, I love the poetry of the King James Version. And so that's the version that I'm visiting. 2 Timothy, the second chapter, the 20th and the 22nd verse. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. I have a title, and I have, now I have a subtitle. My title is the message from a broken vessel. All right. yes. The message from a yes. broken vessel. Uh -huh. yes. There is a message from a broken vessel. Yes. Yes. The message from a broken vessel. Message from a broken vessel. Yes. That message is it's going to get better. Right. It's going to get better. Why? Yes. Because God is going to pour out of you. Yes. God is going to use you for yes. his glory yes. as we allow him yes. to use us, as we allow him to pour into us, yes. he's going to pour out of us a message from the broken vessel. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we humbly ask that you would hear us. We humble ourselves before your mighty hand that you would exalt us in due season. Lord, you are the potter, we are the clay. Make us over again. Empty me today of myself. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Pick up the pieces of our broken lives today and restore our souls. We submit to your word, to your way, to your will. Have your way in our souls. Make us and mold us into vessels that honor you and please you. Vessels that when you pour in, we pour out. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. A message from the message from a broken vessel. And it's going to get better as you allow God to pour into you. You know, I knew I was coming here, and so I had to study. So what is a vessel? I looked up the word vessel, and, and I looked up the word clay. The word clay is used in 34 scriptures, and 
The word vessel is used 237 times in the Bible. And with the help of the internet, I had the opportunity to visit each of these scriptures to see what the message was. But there is a message from a broken vessel. I don't know if you remember in Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah, he said, I want you to rise. And I want you to go down to the potter's house, and I will cause thee to hear my words. He's basically saying, you're going to get a message from a broken vessel. Go to Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. There I will cause you to hear my words. And then I went down to the potter's house. And behold, he was working a work on the wheels. Yeah. And the vessel he made of clay became marred in the hands of the potter. So he yeah. made it again yeah. Yeah. another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. And then the word came to me. This is what Jeremiah is saying. Uh-huh. O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are me, you in my hand, O house of Israel. Yeah. He's basically saying, just like that clay got marred because of life's circumstances, yeah. I was able to put that clay back together again yeah. and make it into a brand new vessel. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you my proposition. My proposition is this. Just in case we have a rolling blackout and my microphone goes out, I'm going to take you, tell you what my proposition is today. God, in his infinite wisdom, has chosen to pour his spirit, pour his water of his spirit into cracked and broken vessels. Cracked and broken. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. Into cracked and and broken vessels and all we have to do is yield our lives to him you know there's a really great story about how God uses our flaws it's it's a story that's told by Willie McNamara in chicken soup for the unsinkable (laughs) souls Uh, the water bearer in India Uh, He he served his master by toting water from the stream to his master's home. He carried the water in two pots that hung on either end of the pole. He balanced it across his shoulders. And one of the pots had a crack on on it, and the other pot was just perfect. The perfect pot always delivered a full portion of the water from the stream, while the cracked pot arrived at the master's house only half full. For two years, this went on every day, the water bearer delivering one full and one half full measures of water to the master's home. Naturally, the full pot was all proud of his service. He, he was perfect to the end in which he, he had been made, but the crack pot was unhappy. He was ashamed of his imperfection. He was miserable that he was only able to accomplish only half of what he was made to do. After an eternity of what what it perceived to be bitter failure, the crackpot spoke to the water bearer one day. He said, I'm so ashamed of myself. I I, want to apologize to you. And the water bearer says, why? He said, for the past two years, uh, uh, spoke the pot, the, the crack in my side has let water leak out all the way to the master's house. And I've been unable to deliver only but half of my load. You do all the work carrying me from the stream to the master's house each day. But because of my defect, you don't get the full value from your effort, sighed the crack pot. Kindly, the water bearer told the distressed pot, as we return to the master's house today, please notice the lovely flowers along the way. Uh And as the trio walked up the hill, the old crack pot noticed the winsome wild flowers the sun glistening off their bright faces, the breeze bending their heads. Yeah. But still at the end of the trail, the faulty pot felt b- bad because it had again leaked out half of its load and again apologized yeah. for, to the bearer for its failure. But the bearer said to the pot, did you notice that the flowers were only on your side of the path? Yeah. Yes, sir. Because I've always known about your flaw. I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day while we wind our walkway back to the stream, you have watered them. And every day that I'm able to pick these beautiful flowers to adorn the master's table, were you not just the way you were, the master would not have had this beauty 
to grace his table. He would not have had the beauty to grace his table. That's because I've always known about your flaws. See, God knows about your flaws. Yes, he does. God knows you're a crackpot, but you're still of use to him. Yes. With that being, without you being just the way you are, Sometimes we try to change people. Sometimes we get into marriages and we try to change people. And we try to mold them and make them into our image. You know, they've already been trained by their parents. But then we marry them and we want to retrain them. Do this, do that, do that, do that. Hallelujah. Men, don't say anything. I, I know. I'm not trying to get you, not trying to get you into trouble. I know. I got to take out the trash and you make up the bed if you're the last one in it. Sometimes I just mess with her and I turn the toilet paper roll upside down just to mess with her a little bit. <laughs> Don't do that. It might not work in your house. No. <laughs> God uses our flaws. Bashar Mitchell says there's beauty in my brokenness. Yeah. God uses your flaws. See, maybe you didn't have a father in the home. Maybe you got off track. But now after putting your flaws in the master's hands, you're a leader and an example to youth. God can use your flaws. Yes. You can effectively minister to the homeless because you've been there. God uses your flaw. My you God. can reach people on the streets because you've been there. God yes. uses your flaw. Oh, you can go into the prisons because you've been there yes. and God uses your My flaw. Yes. You can feed the hungry and the homeless because yes. you've been there. Yes, God uses your flaws. Yes, you can visit the sick, those that are in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, yes. because you've been there and God uses your flaws. I know, I know. I, I, I don't want to be broken. Being broken has so many negative connotations. I understand. I, I, I don't want to be broken. The word broken, it has so many negative con connotations. I looked it up in the dictionary. To be broken it means to undergo fracture, damage, shattered, not working properly, weak, crushed, sorrowful, Subdued completely, disunited by divorce, separation or desertion of a parent. The word broken has so many negative connotations. And I'm telling you, I pride myself in someone who has been not easily broken. I'm going to tell you, just as a black man in America, I've had to be more educated, more articulate, yeah. to work harder, to work smarter. Yeah. And I've taken the attitude that you can't break me. I remember I was the first African-American lieutenant for a police department and as I went in to introduce myself to people sometimes they wouldn't turn around and they had their backs turned and all the challenges that I had just being an African American the yeah. first uh, commander in a police department yeah. I was the first African American mayor for the the, uh, the second largest city in Contra Costa County and it's had its challenges and so yeah. I pride myself into being one that is not easily broken yeah. Yeah. I've got all kinds of scriptures that can say, you know, I, I'm strong and no weapon that is formed against me. I've got all kinds of quotes and scriptures because I'm not easily broken. Even what you say, Maya, you may write me down in history with yeah. your bitter, twisted lies. Uh -huh. You may trod me in the very dirt, <laughs> but still, right. like dust, yes. I rise. Yes. Does my sassiness upset you, she said. Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room, yes, just sir. like moon and like suns, yes. with the certainty of tides, just like yes. hope springing high. Still, I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Because I laugh like I got gold mines digging in my own backyard. Right. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still like air I rise. Yeah. Then she says, does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise? And I can't say the rest in church because I'm a man who's very wise. <laughs> <laughs> and I will end it there. Some of you know that poem. All right, so being broken before God, not necessarily before men. I admit, I've been broken. I've been broken before God. I am uniquely flawed. 
but the Bible says in Psalms 51 and 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Yes, yes, sir. A broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. It's okay to be broken before God. You humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. I took a look at God. Yeah. Isn't God good? Got a father and he bought me a bicycle. Yeah. He was a military. Not only did God send us a father, he sent a man who was just out of Vietnam and he was a military drill sergeant. He had no problem raising three boys. <laughs> he would say things like, when I say jump, I want you to say how high. I'm like, what, the, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> a man that is easily broken. I've been broken. I live in a house where I could have lost my home. May 31st, 2019, my daughter advised me she's going to live her own truth and not live the way we raised her in the church. But by grace, she's still working on her testimony. Yeah. Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019, we had to visit our son who was in a mental hospital because of drug psychosis, because of marijuana and THC that the young people are using today. He was labeled as gravely disabled, but God reversed it, and he is working on his testimony. He's working on his testimony. 2019 was one of the roughest years. Had to pray for one child to come home and one child to leave home. <laughs> I was so happy to get out of the 2019. I said, 2020 is going to be a year. Vision. 2020. Vision. Vision. Yay. 2020, then COVID hit, right? But when you allow God, you allow God to break you, you come out with the anointing. When you allow God to break you, you come out with power. When you allow God to break you, you come out with strength that is made perfect in weakness. When you allow God to break you, you come out with joy in the midst of sorrow. When you allow God to break you, you come out with peace that surpasses uh, all understanding. When you allow God to break you, they say weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Because I'm a broken before God, I can say like Charles Jenkins in Fellowship Chicago, you can't have my family. You can't have my increase. You can't have my breakthrough because I plead the blood of Jesus over that circumstance. I've got joy in my soul. God is in control. I've got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray, and no matter the attack, I won't turn back. Sometimes you have to fight discouragement. In my book, I wrote a book in 2018. It's called Anointed for Leadership. And in chapter 8, it talks about fighting discouragement. There was a person who, as I was mayor, they tried to recall me. And I'm sitting up there on the dais with my fellow council members. And he came to a city council meeting and he tried to embarrass me in front of the congressmen who were there. And, and, and he said, you're, you're being recalled. And he did all these things. And and um, let me tell you what happened. He made two attempts to file a recall against me. 
to remove me from my office. He couldn't file on time. He tried to raise money for signatures. He couldn't raise enough signatures. He couldn't raise enough money. The funds were raised improperly. The Contra Costa Times, what they said about me, they had to issue an apology to me in writing. And then I had to pray for this man because he became ill and was, was awaiting an organ transplant. And I don't wish that on anyone. So now here I am praying that God would heal this man. Though that's what happened. But now let me tell you the real story. The following uh, council meeting where he was going to come and present me with the papers, the pastor canceled Bible study. And in, uh, the, in the council chambers, on the whole front row, was all the church mothers. <sighs> all the church mothers. And every time I looked out at, the, at that man's face who was sneering at me and whoever was with him, I look over in the front row and those church mothers, they say, I'm proud of you, baby. I'm, they're just looking at me. I'm just, I'm just so proud of you, baby. You're just doing so well. You just keep on the good work, baby. I'm just so proud. Mama, just so proud of you, baby. I can see, I can see them saying that to me and just smiling at me. We're, you know what? We're praying for you. I want to let you know someone somewhere is praying for you. I don't know if you had one of the mothers that would grease you down. My mom would pray for us in our sleep. We wake up, we got a oil on our head. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> she would go in and put on our jacket and just pray in our clothes and everything. I was a teenager. I, I found that out. I had to lock my door. <laughs> but the prayers got through. Somebody somewhere is praying for you. Had you on their mind. Took the time to pray for you. Satan desires to sift you as wheat. But somebody's praying for you. Now, I'm going to expound on a couple of scriptures, and then I'm going to conclude and get out of your way. The book of Timothy. We're in the second uh, uh, chapter of Timothy. You all following me so far? Yeah. All right. We're in the second chapter of Timothy. These are the pastoral epistles, First and Second Timothy and Titus. They're called the pastoral epistles because they focus on matters of church leadership and church life. Paul wrote 2 Timothy while he was in prison from 64 to 67 AD. He discussed being a good soldier, being a disciplined athlete, and a faithful farmer. Paul completed his fourth missionary journey, and this is his second imprisonment. And the, world, the word circulated that Nero the emperor was responsible for the sixth day and seven night fire that burned almost three quarters of the city. Nero accused Christians and ordered the arrest of Christians, and they began killing and torturing them. Paul gives us all kinds of clues, letting him know that he's at the end of his life. He says, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up, uh, up for me the crown of righteousness. Paul was a dead man walking. He was in prison. And in his last words, his farewell letter to Timothy, who was at Ephesus, he took the time to talk to his young a, a, a son in the gospel urging him to stand firm and he asked him to come for one final visit he knew false prophets were rising up Paul wanted to build Timothy as a vessel of honor and so in 2 Timothy 2 and 14 he says of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to the subverting of the hearers in other words don't waste your time majoring in the minors getting involved in foolish debates. Right. Then he says, study to show yourself approved unto God. In other words, study, he means do your best. Be diligent in, in, in showing yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. That word rightly dividing comes from a Greek word, orthotomanta, which means to cut straight. Paul was a tent maker, and he had to cut straight some edges. He's telling him, you got to cut this thing straight. The word of God, you've got to cut it straight. You've got to call sin, sin. you got to call sin, sin. There's no playing around with this thing. Don't sugarcoat this thing. It's not going to help people if you're not calling sin, sin. If you're not telling them that sex outside of 
Biblical marriage is a sin. Shacking up when you're not married, all those things, they are a sin. Paul says you got to cut this thing straight if you're going to help people get to heaven. We want to help people get into heaven. You want God to pour his spirit into you, and you got to be clean. you got to give yourself to God if you want him to pour his spirit into you. Then he began to say, but shun profane and vain babblings. Don't get into foolish debates. Then he's talking about in the 19th verse, I'm going to skip over. Nevertheless, in spite of that, the foundation of God standing sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. And now here's my scripture. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. If a man shall purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in meat for the master's use. There's all kinds of vessels. There's a diversity of vessels. There's all kinds of people in this kingdom. Yeah. Imagine vessels arranged in different order in the order of their worth. The gold and silver vessels at the top and earthen wood and clay vessels at the bottom. There are some vessels of dishonor. If you are allowing yourself to yield uh, in, in the lust of the flesh and, and all those scriptures in Galatians, I believe it is 5 and 19, that talks about all the lusts of the flesh. If you succumb to those things, you are treating yourself as a vessel of dishonor. But the Bible talks about that vessel of honor in Galatians 5 and 22. You have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. Against such there is no law. The church of God. If you cleanse yourself from those negative things, then you will be a vessel unto honor. I'm going to talk about a few vessels, and then I'm going to get out of your way. You know, people are compared to vessels. What kind of vessel are you? I want you to think about that. There's a diversity of vessels in the kingdom. What kind of vessel are you? As I mentioned these vessels, I'm talking about me and I've been probably all of these vessels. The gold vessel is of great value. It's polished, able to be used. It shines, probably perfect in that big house. Does everything just right. It's the most malleable metal. In other words, it's soft, can be molded, soft. Are you that vessel that's soft, can't take criticism, can't take anyone saying Anything negative to you? To, to you. I, I, I've been that kind of vessel. Let's talk about the silver. Another valuable vessel, the silver. Graceful lines and carvings, but tarnishes in the elements. Can't handle trials and tribulation. Can't go in, through anything. Rainy day Christian, can't go through anything. Anything can stop you or, uh, 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 from serving the Lord. Anything could prevent you from being faithful and coming to church. I've been that vessel. What about the brass vessel? It's known, brass is known for its acoustic attributes, the baritones and the trombones. I just bought a new trombone. Brass used for shell casings for bullets. Easily tarnished. Loud. Shallow. Lacks depth. Shoot off at the mouth. I've been that brass vessel. What about you? What about the crystal goblet wanting our contents on display? Look at me, pastor. Let me be in charge of that. Why was that person called to sing? I know that song, too. Let me sing it. I'm fancy. The goblet. The wooden vessel, polished and carved, damaged, abrased, hollowed out, empty inside, set in one form, set in its ways. That wooden vessel, this is the way we've always done it. Yeah. You know, we're going to do it this way. Why? Because we've always done it that way. Yeah. That's why we're doing it this way, because we've always done it. No, no, no. We do prayer first, and then uh, a praise and worship. Pastor, you did, you did prayer after the praise and worship. We... We, we always do it this way. Sometimes we get set in our ways. But you know what? The pot, of course we know God can use simple earth. And then there's the earthen vessel. It's imperfect. It's ordinary. It's good for everyday use. 
have the ability to mold it into something that has something very precious inside. Yes, I've been that clay vessel too. He can take us as vessels, pots. He can fill us with his glory. Hallelujah. And as vessels of clay in this life, we become chick, chipped, cracked, and imperfect from the cares of this life. But as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the light of Jesus Christ shine through cracks, shine through these broken vessels. Can we get an amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. We got one more, Sister Lisa. Amen. God knows what he's doing using broken vessels to carry his spirit. The scripture says, for God who commanded the light to shine have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Then it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God puts his spirit inside of earthen vessels. But can you imagine a vessel trying to tell God what he wants him to be? Can you imagine a vessel telling God what school and classes he should go to? Can you imagine a vessel saying, God, okay, you shouldn't have sent me that way, God. I wanted to go this way. Somebody told me, if you ever want to tell God a joke, tell him your plans. He'll laugh. <laughs> He'll laugh. You ever want to tell God a joke, tell him your plans. He'll laugh. He said, I know, I know the plans that I have for you, says God. Was that Jeremiah 29, 11? I know the plans that I, if you ever want to tell God a joke, tell him your plans. Romans 19 and 20, as I go to my conclusion, but who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? That's silly, a vessel. Talking to God and telling God what to do. That don't even sound right. sound right, a vessel talking. Let me say this, and I'm going to let you go. The master was searching for a vessel to use. Before him were many, which one should he choose? This is my vessels right here. Take me, cried the gold, and I'm shiny and bright. I'm of great value, and I do things just right. My beauty and luster will outshine the rest. And for someone like you, Master, gold would be best. The master passed on with no word at all and looked at a silver urn, narrow and tall. I'll serve you, dear master. I'll pour out your wine. I'll be on your table whenever you dine. My lines are so graceful, my carving so true, and silver will always compliment you. Unheeding, the master passed on to the brass, wide mouth and shallow and polished like glass. Take me, cried the vessel. I know I will do. Place me on your table for all men to view. Look at me, cried the goblet of crystal so clear. My transparency shows my content so dear. Though fragile am I, I will serve you with pride. And I'm sure I'll be happy in your house to abide. The master came next to a vessel of wood, polished and carved, it solidly stood. You may use me, dear master, the wooden bowl said, but I'd rather you use me for fruit, not for bread. Then the master looked down and saw a vessel of clay. Empty and broken, it helplessly lay. No hope had the vestal that the master might choose to cleanse and make whole, to fill and to use. Ah, this is the vessel I've been hoping to find. I'll mend it and cleanse it and make it all mine. I need not the vessel with pride in itself, nor one that is narrow to sit on a shelf, nor one that is big mouth and shallow and loud, nor one that displays his content so proud, not the one that thinks he can do all things just right, but this plain earthly vessel filled with power and might. Then, gently, he lifted the vessel of clay, mended it and cleansed it, and filled it that day, spoke to it kindly, there's work you must do. Just pour out to others by being kind. Just pour out to others by seeing about your sisters and brothers. Just pour out to others by visiting the sick. Just pour out to others by visiting those that are in prison. Just 
pour out to others. By feeding the hungry, just pour out to others. By housing the homeless, just pour out to others. By encouraging the downtrodden, just pour out to others. By visiting those that are sick and shut in, just pour out to others. By ministering to those who don't know God, just pour out to others as I pour in to you. Can we give the Lord a hand praise? Yeah. Hallelujah. God wants us to pour out to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you stand with me, we're going to pray and we're going to practice social distancing as we do this. I'm just going to ask you to stand with me and pray and put your hand over your heart. And we're going to pray and I'm going to take my seat. Lord, we just thank you today, oh God. We thank you for each and every one of your vessels, oh God. We thank you that you are making each and every person an instrument of your grace, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you that we, you're, you're pouring out into these vessels of honor, oh God. You're pouring your spirit and you have poured your spirit into this flesh, oh God. Hallelujah. So that they can serve you, oh God. They're only required to pour out as you poured into them, oh God. So continue to pour into them with your goodness, with your mercy, with your grace, with your anointing. Hallelujah. Everything that is needed in this ministry is right here in this church. The talents that are going to come forth, the, the, the accounting skills, the leadership skills, the, the community outreach, everything that is needed in this ministry is right here in this ministry. Youth leaders, youth that could, that could minister to other young people, youth that can go into the schools and not afraid to speak the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is needed for this ministry to prosper is right here in this ministry. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, oh God. We ask that you'll continue to pour out, pour into Pastor Cortland and First Lady Cortland. Continue to pour out to them, oh God. You see that they are pouring into this ministry. They're giving their all. They're worshiping you. They're serving you, oh God. Continue to pour into them, oh God. And we thank you because you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. Lord, we just thank you. And we ask that your word would be sealed today. We give you praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.